you're going to talk about jazz, then you've got to talk about Utah. That's right, Utah. Now that doesn't make any sense at all. Actually, it all made sense back in 1974. The Jazz opened their NBA doors in New Orleans, a town always down with rhythm and flow. And nobody captured the flavor of the city better than Pistol Pete Maravich. His high notes and sharp moves brought credibility to a franchise that adored five straight losing seasons. Sounds like the Blues. All that losing scared the fans away, so the team was forced to move to that bebop, b-ball mecca known as Utah. That's right, Utah. Salt Lake City was an entire galaxy away from the jamming street vibe of New Orleans. Other than the name, Crystal Pete was the only reminder of their more sinful time. But he retired in 1980. After six years of silence, Larry Miller bought the team in 1986 and immediately put his wacky stamp on a team without a beat. Miller's a walking contradiction, a Mormon, a car salesman, a family man, a yeller. Man, he's not your typical owner. His hands-on approach is often reported as meddlesome. But he did bring a taste of winning to the smallest media market in the NBA. Stockton. What a pass to Parker! And the fans can thank him for keeping Utah's version of Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie in the house for 13 years, even if Stockton Malone lack a little pizzazz. Mind you, you'd think having a Harley would be cool. Malone rides his chopper around at a blazing 15 miles per hour. Hey Carl, Miles Davis had a Ferrari. Malone's sidekick Stockton lacks a groove. His on-the-court moves are money, but off the court he keeps to himself. Gotta respect that. The fans, they've got their own tune. They're not too cool, but they turn the Delta Center into a frenzied den of wild dogs. No arena can match the high voltage, high decibel mania. Last year, they made it to the finals. Got a shot, here's the three for the game. And there you go to Chicago! Utah goes to Chicago! They went to Chicago and lost to the Bulls. The fans love the title tees, but want more. The question is, can the team move to the same beat as the fans? If I don't get an NBA title with the Jazz, I don't want one. The score sounds right, but the performance might need a little more practice. There you go, Dave Lewis with the story of the Jazz once New Orleans, now Utah. And uh, the Utah version are six points down, 36-30 they are losing. It's half time in game five in Chicago. The balls are up and the balls are on the verge of their sixth championship. If they can stay in front in this game, they're going to win it in front of their home crowd. And uh, Jim Brandon, um, the Jazz are a team uh, with, a, with a good long history now and of recent years they've started to come through. But... They're a team that haven't gone all the way yet. And do you think that's the major factor? Never quite crossed that final hurdle. Yeah, it's been very frustrating, I would imagine, for themselves and their, their fans because, you know, even in, in, in the early days when Stockton showed his pedigree and so did Malone, who was the mailman, uh, they had a good team around them and uh, uh, they never made it through. So those two guys have been there through a, a few shifts of other personnel being around them. Now a new breed of guys are brought through. Harnacek was brought in. The big dog was brought in as yeah. well to give support. And they still haven't, uh, they haven't, quite, haven't quite nailed done it. Yeah, it down. They've always been there on the cusp, you know, but uh, never. Do you subscribe to this, uh, the, the, the business of the West being the weaker conference by quite a long way, hence them never quite been out to step up and take over and win where the Bulls have been winning? No, because, I mean, if you look at uh, the era before that, it's Magic Johnson in, in, in the wild, yes. wild west of L.A. Lakers. I mean, so that, it really doesn't hold the water. I just think that, uh, uh, you know, there's just a, a great, great uh, individual, the greatest player of all time, Michael Jordan being in Chicago, and then, uh, the, the, you know, his, his uh, sidekick, Scottie Pippen, uh, it's just been such a difficult thing to, to, to overcome in the last uh, seven years. Absolutely. Well, in the first half, we saw Tony Kukoc pick himself up 17 points. But the man that you mentioned there, Michael Jordan's also got 13. Mm -hmm. Hasn't really got going yet, but there's uh, been a few nice early signs, as we can see here. Yeah, there with a the little finger roll. I mean, he can score so many different ways. Here's a, here's a nice move, crossing over on him. Oh, look at that. You love this one. Oh, you? You just love opens this him one. up, just <laughs> drops it. Ah, crocodile tears falling right through the, right through the net. Unbelievable. So that was, that was the first time we saw him do it in that particular game. And, and, yeah. you, and you were saying, I and Mike were saying as well at the same time, Shots don't come any more difficult than that. What, what, what's so technically difficult about what he does there? Just the fact that he's going against the grain. You know, he, he, he reverse dribbled, okay, and then he came back to where he was initially. The defense comes at him, and then he fades away, which is going away from the basket. And now that you see that the distance between the defender's hand and the ball is only a matter of uh, inches, and he still gets it away. Uh, and, and I would say about a good 20 feet away and just drops it. And like clearly, it's... obviously, it was too easy for him the first time, so he thought he'd get the bat ball in the way for the second that's time right, just to that's test right. himself. Absolutely, absolutely. I don't think we have the clip here, but it was just amazing. He bodied him up. He knew Anderson was going to come after it. Technically, just to get a little closer to it, if you can. Yeah. And then uh, just went over him uh, with, with a fadeaway jump shot. Okay, so um, 
you're in both locker rooms as coach now. Um, ah, let's, let's take the away <laughs> team to start with. Uh, yeah. You're six points down in a game that you simply have got to win. And I'm guessing you've sent your guys out thinking they're going to go out with energy and they're going to be ten points up and show the balls that they mean it. It's not happened. I think I'd probably do two things. I think, uh, first of all, you know, you're in the same situation you were before, where uh, you're playing horrible, but you're back. At, you're still in the game. Um, you're trying to pep the guys up to say, you know, just relax and play our games. And at times, it went pretty well. You want to be as positive as possible in this situation. But I think before I left the locker room, I pull over my, my leaders and have a little private uh, inner, <laughs> com inner circle, you know, have a little conversation. And listen, guys, you know, I need you to lead us tonight. You know, and I think that would be Stockton Malone, basically. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, lads, but we're losing. And Phil Jackson, is, is Phil Jackson content at the moment as, as the Bulls leader? He has that little lead. The greatest thing about Chicago Bulls is that they're perfectionists. They're never satisfied. I mean, if they were up by 20, they would be still saying how they could execute better and exploit the Utah Jazz even more. So, uh, I mean, they're talking about different things and, and maybe how they could do better exploiting people in situations uh, in the second half. And, you know, they, they, they still, I think, uh, internally know that uh, they want to finish it tonight. It's a guy that, um, we, we talked about John Stockton and, and Carl Malone and how important they are as individuals and indeed as a partnership. Jeff Hornacek has been a crucial player for Utah down the line because he's a man that always makes the shots. He's, Quiet yeah, in his first he half. He is such what we call in the game a clutch player. I mean, when, it, when the money's on the line, it really counts. He's the type of guy you always want to be, have on your team. And, uh, you know, in, in my opinion, when he first got recruited to them, I thought that was a championship for them. I thought he was going to deliver it for them, uh, being the, the, the great supporting player for Stockton. But just really, everyone's so many, like you said, so many people for Utah are playing out of their own sink, out of what yeah. they normally do. It just looks funny. And, and you know, Iron said, you know, right, rightfully so, it's difficult to feel whether, you know, to suss out whether they're, they're going to do anything or not because it's just not the Utah Jazz that we're used to yeah. seeing. Well, I don't want to tag their toe just yet, obviously, because, right. of course, you know, this is still anybody's game. That's but right. if the post-mortem comes along, um, Carl Malone uh, spent a lot of time talking about um, Ostertag during the course of the season. Mm -hmm. man who earns a lot of money, mm -hmm. a bit more than he does. Yeah. And still, yeah. yet again, he's not shown. A bone of contention. And really, uh, you know, uh, uh, Malone has really gotten his point proven because, you know, they pay the youngster who really hasn't delivered, not an all-star player, a heck of a lot more money than a guy who's going to be in the Hall of Fame without question, uh, one of the greatest players ever played. And where's the, the, the however million-dollar man now? He's not yeah. even contributing. He can't even uh, get on the court right now. So, you know, probably a bad uh, decision by management. And uh, I think it's hurting them. Maybe that's what's happening internally. That's right. Right. Well, there could be rumblings going on in that uh, in that jazz locker room. The guys are actually out now shooting around. But uh, Ian and Mike, um, we must say is that um, you know everything we've just been talking about Utah and what they do as a classic Utah thing. The bench, not a lot going on there either, is there? Where is the inspiration going to come from for you two? Yeah, the thing with Utah heading into this series, guys, is that you figured that bench would play such a large role. That has not been the case. Is we take a look at the halftime highlights here at the United Center. Early on, Adam Keefe getting inside. Carl Malone, he had a presence as well. They blocked the shot alongly there, and then they go up the floor. That starts the fast break, and Stockton just has the lane, takes advantage. After that, though, Mike, in that first quarter, Malone getting involved offensively for the Bulls. It was the Tony Kukoc show. Yeah, Tony just kept the uh, Bulls in it. Scored before, scored on the same kind of play there off the feet from Jordan, and even gets one here with another foul. So he hit his free throws also, and without him in that first half, Chicago would have had some problems. And you know with Kukoc, at any time, he's liable to just explode offensively. He has that kind of ability inside-outside game. And he's a weapon that the Bulls have certainly used this season. Here's a weapon that the Bulls have used for our, uh, share, their share of years. Michael Jordan ending play in the first quarter. In the second, it was more of Kukos. And then Jordan got into the game plan a bit more. And we knew he would. Well, Jordan, I thought, waited for someone else to step up. Kukos did. And sort of Jordan took over after that as he hits the turnaround there, fading away. And you know, like we said before, Ryan, he will somehow tonight at the end of the game have 30 points or more. So uh, that's awful nice to have that. And that was the incredible angle that Jordan was able to hit, sending it over the backboard and in. For the Jazz, Carl Malone continues to apply the pressure like a locomotive down that lane. And Malone had some words for the officials and Dennis Rodman for that matter. Jordan composed, just went about his business. 
as Malone continues to try to keep the Jazz in this game. Well, he has to, but he can't do it for two or three quarters. He has to do it for four quarters. And uh, if Utah wants to win, he'll have to produce. Pippen finally gets in the scoring column there with a drive. And Utah getting some help also from some other players. Tony Kukoc getting one more bucket for the Bulls. It's 36 to 30. Bulls in front at halftime as we send it back to the studio. Webbo and coach. The Bulls have a six-point lead, and when we come back from the break, we'll be bringing you the second half. So make sure you stay around because you are watching history in the making. We'll see you in a couple of minutes' time. The second half is about to start live for you in Chicago. The Bulls versus the Jazz. It's 36-30. It is a lead for the home team, and if they can sustain that lead, they win themselves their sixth NBA title. And uh, Jim Braden, um, you'd be surprised, I'm guessing, if that lead didn't remain at the end at this stage, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, uh, the law of probability is leading uh, heavily, <laughs> yeah. like, like two tons, you know, towards the direction of Chicago just uh, finishing out tonight. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a character check for Utah and seeing if they can muster uh, the sort of uh, energy and, 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 uh, and pride uh, to, to not only push this to the wire, but also maybe even win and take it back to Utah. Yeah, thanks for now, Jim. We'll be chatting a little bit later on, but we can go back to the floor now. And, uh, and Iron, it's been an intriguing series, isn't it? Because, of course, we've, we've often been telling people this is a, this is a sport of runs. Te uh, put the team's putting a lot, of ball, a lot of points together. We've just simply not seen that, have we? Do you imagine it's going to go like that for the second half as well? I think it's going to be nip and tuck. I really believe it will be tight. I have to believe in my heart of hearts that the Utah Jazz have something left in them. This is a team well chronicled, won 62 games. They were the best in the Western Conference. They swept the Los Angeles Lakers four straight to qualify for the NBA Championship Series. But Mike, they're tough to figure out because it seems like they had all the confidence sucked out of them after they lost that game two at home in what was a tight ball game. Yeah, because then in game three when they came back here, they were very flat and lost by 42 points. And tell you what, I they were in game four also, but they didn't win it. So their confidence is shaken. But you know what? This whole series can turn around if Utah can come back and win this game because then they know they can go back to the friendly confine of the Delta Center back in Salt Lake City for game six and seven. So... Uh, a, a, a very important 24 minutes of basketball here for a Utah, of course. Tony Kukoc, you see those well, red dots specify where he was shooting the ball from, and you can't do it any better than that. No. And Jerry Sloan going over his strategy with his team. Mike, I think you and I both agree that if Utah wins this game tonight, we'll probably see a game seven. You would expect the Jazz to then carry that momentum into a game six. Yeah, with only one day, it is uh, Carl Malone. Shots made in red, so he's certainly done his part. He's missed five also. The one out there by half court, of course, is the one at the end of the quarter, so you can't really count that. But you know what? Doing his part is one thing. Doing his part now, when it counts, the final 24 minutes of action, because you know that man, Michael Jordan, will do his share. Yeah, absolutely. I, and, and, and The thing is, you can count on Jordan. So far in the finals, Malone has had some problems, you know, in the last quarter. So uh, the, their, the stars, their respective teams, so they have to come through when the guts of the game come. You wonder what's going through Michael Jordan's mind right now. Will this be the final half of basketball that Jordan plays in the NBA? I still don't believe it. Yeah, I, something tells me he'll be back also. But uh, what he wants to do in 24 minutes is put up five fingers and then put up one more finger to get that sixth ring. There is something to be said for going out on top. And if Jordan does win the championship, he will have accomplished something that very few athletes can say. Nobody could knock them off their pedestal. You know, so far, and, and you know what I mean? That, I think that lays in people's minds, these athletes' minds. They know when Jordan's around, they said, oh, man, I, I guess I'll have to play for second. Jordan, of course, win the championship. And he likes that. I mean, he doesn't want to let that pedestal fall off any. So he, he'll continue to remind you, if I'm around, everything goes through Chicago. And that has been the case over six of the last eight years. Second half action. The Utah Jazz fighting for their lives. The Bulls hoping to wrap up another championship here on their home floor. Malone nearly had it taken away. Antoine Carr getting the start in the second half for Utah. Malone knocks it down from the corner. 
Yeah, see, Keith, uh, so Jerry Sloan makes a switch. He brings Antoine Carr in to give some physical play against Luke Longer. And it's a four-point game, 36 to 32, Bulls. Chicago's first possession of the third quarter. Longley hands for Harper. He's guarded by Stockton. Kukoc pops to the outside. Kukoc, three-point range, puts it on the floor. The dish off, Longley the jump shot. Rimming no, and Brian Russell played for rebound. Stockton had the hole clogged up by Harper. Hornacek a bounce to the interior, Malone. Well, Harper's going to get a foul here, all right, crashing into Hornacek. The ball goes into Malone, and there's a cross between Hornacek and Stockton. Harper a bit too physical. So for Harper, his first personal foul, that's the first team foul on Chicago here in the third quarter. Just over a minute gone by in the second half. And the Bulls lead by four. Stockton off for Russell. Malone turns on Longley, 10 to shoot. Malone will settle for the jump shot and buries it. So Pro Malone comes out firing. Yeah, and he's setting Longley up for a drive now. He's hit a couple shots from 15, 16 feet. And Longley gets any closer, Malone will use the speed to get around him. It's a two-point game. Kukoc out on the perimeter. Pippen using the body. Outside Harper, three-pointer. Ron Harper knocks it down from long range. And it's up to Harper to hit that shot because so much attention inside to Pippen, he will be open. Stockton likes to leave to get some steals. Harper's first points of the night, and the Bulls extend their lead to five. Malone battling for inside position. Nice feed from Stockton to Malone. Well, right now, the mail is being delivered offensively for Utah in the presence of Carl Malone. He scored all six points for them in this third quarter. He has 20 points overall. Harper looks for the open man. Kukoc feeds to Jordan. Jordan, the back in on Russell, lost the ball. And here come the Jazz the other way with Stockton. Waits for his teammates to get down the floor. They trail by three. I think someone else needs to shoot here. You don't want the same thing to happen like in game three when Malone starts scoring all your points. And it's Antoine Carr forcing his way to the interior for two. So Stockton, I think, understood that. Iron. He gets it to Antoine Carr, and Utah in the hunt. First bucket of the evening for Antoine Carr and a one-point Bulls lead. Pippen gives up his dribble. George turning on the baseline. Kick out. Kukoc, who hasn't missed. That streak continues. A two-pointer. See, Jordan threw three people. Popped it right back out to Tony Kukoc. 19 points for Kukoc on eight of eight shooting. Russell. He's been quiet offensively. No points. Lobs it inside. Malone got tied up with Longley. And the big fella will pick up the personal foul for Longley. That's his second. Well spaced. There's Malone. Hits a jump shot here. Just Longley a little slow with the hand going up. And, and right now, Malone really making it tough for Luke Longley and the Chicago Bulls. Malone with Longley holding the ball. Malone backing in again. Malone in a crowd. Can't get the roll, but the tap-in goes down for Antoine Carr. Well, see, Carr knew the shot was coming. He went and got position and made them pay. Pippen a pull-up for three. Long rebound, Jordan. No look feed for Longley. Fans wanted him to take it to the basket, but he turned it over. Stockton comes out of the pack. Stockton, stutter step, lost his footing. Fans wanted a walk. Hornacek can't hit the long jump shot. Harper is fouled by Stockton to reach it. Yeah, that would, would have been real big for Hornacek to hit that shot. He doesn't because Utah would have gotten the lead back. I think it's Jordan time. I threw the pass to Lolly. Lolly wouldn't score. He's real lazy with the ball. Stockton looking on, committed to foul. So watch for Jordan to start taking over the Bull offense. Down to 740 remaining in the third. Bulls 41, Jazz 40. Kukoc for Harper. Shot clock is down to 10. Jordan, guarded by Russell. Jordan and a turnaround. And the rebound for John Stockton. Hornacek, pump fake, Pippen didn't buy it. 
Malone had it knocked away for a moment. Malone for the lead. Can't hit. Jordan uncontested for the rebound. Jordan on a crossover. Straight down the middle. And the follow from Pippen. See, Jordan put his palms up like, where was the foul? But Pippen just cleaned, cleaned it all up inside. Scotty Pippen gets the bucket. And the Bulls' lead is three. Malone works his way in for the deuce and the foul. Well, if I'm Phil Jackson or Luke Longley, I'm telling the officials, listen, he's in the paint too long. And a timeout. Malone will get a free throw when we come back. 6.46 to play in the third quarter. Bulls 43, Jazz 42. now for the Bulls. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to finish here. Uh, at the moment, Utah have come out in this second half and they mean it. Now, you've been watching these games. You know who you like, who you don't like, and it's a chance for you to actually put pen on paper in a kind of high-tech way by voting for your MVP for the series. Uh, we have our very own website and you can get in touch with us by getting in touch on that one there. We're looking for your choice of MVP for the finals. Here is what you have to uh, apply to is www.channel4.com. www.channel4.com. At the moment, Scotty Pippin has got his nose in front, and that's the right kind of nose to have in front. Okay. That's what we're saying. But there could be other people that you care to vote for, and uh, Jim Brandon, we can uh, look at a man who seems to have decided in the second half that uh, mm. he's going to, if he's going to go down, he's going down in flames. Carl Malone is playing like the all-star that he is. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's going to work. He has mismatches down low. I mean, you know, he's, he's gotten wound up, I think, because of uh, 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 Rodman saying that he's, he's been done a great job against him, so he's going after him. But now, certainly with Longley on him, he's saying, wow, it's Christmas all over again. You know, he's, uh, he's really taking it to him. Absolutely. He must love and Luke Longley on this when he gets his points, and he's uh, at the free throw line now. Carl Malone connects on the free throw. And we are tied, 43-43, 6.45 to play in the third quarter here at the United Center. It's game five of the 1998 NBA Finals. The Bulls looking to wrap it up. They lead three games to one. Utah looking strong here in the third. Kukoc, he lost the ball. Adam Keefe stepped in. I make, make that Jeff Hornacek who stepped in to take the ball away. Russell looks to the inside. Malone, the back end. Stockton. John Stockton. He drives in for the uncontested layup. The Kukoc got there late and got under Stockton, and John Stockton fell down hard to the floor. And the Utah Jazz have a two-point lead. Pippen can't hit the three. Robin, who just checked into the game, could not hold on to the rebound. Hornacek, the pull-up jump, and Utah in front by four. What a stretch for the Utah Jazz, the way they're playing. Give them a lot of credit. They were down six to start this quarter. They're up four now, playing solid basketball on both ends. Jordan to the corner, Harper. Rod Harper rimming out. Rodman couldn't hold it. Knocked out of bounds, though, by Utah. I think what the Chicago Bulls are doing, Ian, is they're waiting for Jordan to erupt. And he's just not doing it right now because of the defense by Utah. Someone else needs to start hitting some shots. The Jazz are 8 of 11 from the field in this third quarter. This is Jordan. Interior. Pippen smacked away. John Stockton hits the deck. Ron Harper will be called for the foul. Yeah, Harper got him in the back, knocked him down. The official on the other end, Billy Oak, saw it. And right now, Chicago not hitting shots and turning the ball over. And Utah can get a six-point lead here, Ian, with a bucket. Watch Harper come in and get Stockton right in the back. That's a cheap shot right there by Harper. That's the 14th foul on the ball for the Jazz. Quickly turn it over. Antoine Carr didn't see the pass coming. Pippen, outside Harper, extra feet, two coach to three. Ball knocked around, Pippen tries to save it. And Brian Russell will be called for the personal foul. 
You know, as bad as Chicago's playing, they're still only down four. They're not hitting anything. And now Joey Crawford with a double technical on both Stockton and Scotty Pippen. That really washes out now. So no free throws are taken. Stockton getting the tee. Pippen also getting a tee. Earlier tonight, Carl Malone got a technical as well. Horn Pippen in some traffic, but foul was called before the shot. Yeah, Jeff Hornacek, and this is starting to be called real tight because there's a lot of bodies coming on bodies. There's why Stockton was mad at the elbow by Pippen. See, before that, on a play, Malone got a technical when he hit Rodman. Jazz lead by four. Jordan losing the ball out of bounds. And the fans just cannot believe that the officials did not blow the whistle on that play. In a way, I'm surprised too. I, there was some hacking going on on Jordan there. Bulls hold on to it. 18 seconds left to shoot. Jordan getting aggressive. Hanging in the air. And a chance for three. The foul call. It's his time. I, I know he knows his team is flat. Someone has to score, and Jordan just has the ability to do that. Tongues out means bad luck for the people guarding him. And he just hangs going left and swishes it through. Brian Russell picks up the foul. That's number three. All right, we have to keep an eye on this now. Double foul on Rodman and Hornacek. So Malone has a technical. Rodman has a technical. Pippen has a technical. Stockton has a tee as they talk it over. One more and they're all, and they go. So two technicals and you're out. That could loom large here late in the game. This is the Utah that should have showed up in the first three or four games when they were losing. A physical team that doesn't want to be washed out of the playoffs right now. Jordan with an elbow foul iron off the ball. That's number three on Jordan. It's a dirty play by Jordan. He got his elbow up and cracked Hornacek pretty hard in the face. And the official's right on it. As the Jazz have gotten more physical, the Bulls have gotten physical back. We'll see which team backs down with 427 left in the third. Hornacek, who missed a pair of free throws earlier, uncharacteristically. Here's another look. Watch Jordan's right elbow. Boom, right there. Comes slapping down the Hornacek right in front of the official. Hornacek. He hits both. Jeff Hornacek with six points. And Utah with a three-point advantage. Jordan. He continues the dribble. And a bit of a mismatch with Antoine Carr. The jump shot. Michael Jordan carries it. Jordan knows he has to carry the team offensively. And once he starts doing that, he'll get some open shots for his other players. 18 points for Jordan. The Jazz lead by one. Malone. Outside Stockton. Two-man game. Stockton to Malone. Turn around jump shot. Malone's got it. And a foul. Rodman got him on the elbow. Not much. Here's the play with Jordan as he scores that two-pointer before the Malone make. Antoine Carr right there, but it really doesn't matter. Carl Malone. This has been his wake-up call. 25 points for the mailman. How will he perform in the fourth quarter? That is a question still looming because we saw the performance in game four and there wasn't much to speak about. No, not at all. And the thing is now Utah just can't let this fade. They've had a great third quarter. They have a four-point lead. They need to continue to get that cushion in the fourth quarter if it gets rough for them. Somehow they've gotten their shooting percentage up around 50% for the game. And that's saying something. They were down around 33, 34% for most of the action. Michael Jordan is taking over for the Bulls. The thing is, Jordan cannot do it for the rest of this quarter in the, in the fourth. Someone else needs to get going for Chicago. 52 to 50. Bullet pass to the inside. Malone on a double D. Swinging the elbows. Stockton looks to Malone again. Back in on Rodman. Malone. Cannot convert. Pippen moves ahead and now slows it down. Just under three minutes left in the third quarter. 
Jordan one on one with Russell. Jordan the jump shot. Long rebound to Russell. And the Jazz maintain their lead. Two points. Stockton stutter step. That's the familiar setup. Malone, the back in on Rodman. The mailman stumbling down with Rodman. And what's the call? They call a block on right, on Rodman. That's a bad call. Rodman did all he could do there. Malone ran him over, and Malone will get free throws out of this. The free throws will come when we return. A timeout. The Jazz lead the Bulls 52 to 52, 31 to play in the third quarter. More to come from the United Center. Let's send it back to the studio. Mark Webster, Jim Brandon. Thanks very much indeed there, guys. And uh, we're seeing the third quarter that Utah needed to have. And uh, six points down they were. And Jim, they've, you know, they've given everything in this one, haven't they, in this particular quarter. But they're not getting away just yet. Yeah, but they've opened it up and they've set the tone for the final quarter and, you know, that they're not going to roll over and die. And I think that's the message, that, as, uh, you know, Mike said earlier, uh, courtside, that's something they should have done, you know, before. Uh, but it's good to see it and I think it's going to be a great finish. Now, in the first half, we saw Michael Jordan uh, making sure that everybody else got involved. You do get the feeling that this man's setting himself up for the big one, don't yeah, you? I, I think his strategy uh, initially was to, to see who's going to step up because he, the, 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 the thing that was obvious is that Possibly, if he got going early, everyone's going to stand around and watch him. And what we can but, see here is both sides of Jordan's game. That's right. Yeah, they're they're little, they're little One thing that's probably underestimated as far as Jordan is concerned is that he's a tough individual. Um, he, he does some spectacular things and, and dynamic things and, and looks beautiful, but he's a tough guy too. Yeah, so. that's not just a guy who goes up front and shoots nicely, is he? He, right. he? He's involved all the way down the line. And, you, and we saw there in one of those shots as well that you, you, you pointed out to me as well. He looked, he, as soon as he made his shot, he looked around at the rest of the team and just said, like, right, call it. Don't get caught up into, you know, what they did in the Indiana series. Get caught up in the referees, officials, the officials' uh, calls. Uh, get caught up with the crowd booing. That, and just, you know, stop moaning. Stay focused. End of the day, we'll have a chance to win it if we're ready to do it. That's right. Well, it's, uh, it's getting scrappy out there. And the reason I am guess, uh, I know, Mike, that it's getting scrappy is because both teams are now realizing we really are at that point now. It's, it's do or die time, isn't it? Yeah, I think both teams realize that level and coach, and normally, when the Bulls realize it, they rise to the occasion. We're not so sure about Utah. I thought the Jazz would play their best game of this series here tonight because they have a lot of pride, a lot of experience, but will they have enough to avoid elimination? That remains to be seen. You can always check out NBA.com for all the latest NBA happenings. Of course, the focus, the 1998 NBA Finals. Jazz lead it, 52 to 50 in game five here tonight, 231 remaining in the third quarter. Well, it's been all Carl Malone offensively in the third quarter in the beautiful city of Chicago, and that's why they have the two-point lead, maybe four if Malone makes a couple free throws now coming out of this timeout. But uh, you're right, Ian, this team has a lot of testitude. They've come back. They've played hard. They've been very physical. See, the Bulls do not like a physical team, and that's what Utah is supplying out there so far. Carl Malone, 26 points here this evening on 12 of 20 shooting. And Malone beginning to look like last year's MVP. Yeah, he's carrying them right now with those broad shoulders, and that's there's still a lot of time left. And look at those numbers. Three to four games, two, three, and four, when Utah lost, 16, 22, and 21. Those are not Carl Malone-like numbers. This is a man that averaged 27 points per game this season. Maybe, and obviously this would be up for argument, maybe the best pure power forward to ever step onto an NBA floor. Malone hits on the first attempt where he is three of three tonight. He has a second one coming. Steve, Malone can give the Jazz a four-point lead. Yeah, Steve Kerr in the game now for Chicago, and he's out there to supply some offense to carry some of the load with Michael Jordan. John Stockton out on the bench. Dennis Rodman returns to the sidelines for Chicago, replaced by Luke Longley. Heisley is in there for Utah taking John Stockton's spot on the floor. Kerr feeds Pippen. Kukoc for Pippen. Shot clock is down to six. Pippen on the turnaround. 
Longley on the inside. He can't get it to drop, but it's tapped in. They give it to Longley, but I think Kukos is the one that got it, Ian. But nonetheless, two points for Chicago. And the first two points of the night for Longley. Jazz lead by two. Under two minutes to play in the third. Hornacek. Malone now being watched by Longley. Malone, the jump shot. He's just not missing. No, and it's just going right into the hoop where Longley could do nothing. Robin had some problems with him before, so Carl Malone right now getting it going offensively. And he quiets this United Center crowd down. They will build again if the Bulls can get a basket on this possession. Malone, by the way, with 30 points. Jordan. Timer at four. George missing on the jump shot. Isley able to save it. And the Jazz coast ahead with Hornacek. The spin on Kerr. Hornacek going all the way to the rim and a foul. Well, Pippen took the brunt of it, Ian, as he got underneath Hornacek and fell. But nonetheless, Hornacek will come back. See, here's Malone, just what we call face up right there. Turns around and shoots. And that is nothing but the bottom of the net. And the Bulls are over the limit, so this drive by Jeff Hornacek will earn him a pair of free throws. Hornacek with a chance to extend Utah's lead. It's now five. We'll get a change in Chicago's lineup. Ron Harper back into the game. And if necessary, these two teams will do it again in Salt Lake City, Utah. June 14th. Michael Jordan getting a breather for the final minute and change. And the Jazz match their largest lead, six. Kukos beats the post long leg. Harper. Nice look underneath. Pippen couldn't finish. And Keith clearing the rebound for Isley. Hornacek directing traffic. Final 37 seconds of the third. Hornacek passed him off the backboard, but Longley is called for the foul on Malone. Well, they were bailed out there, too, because that was a terrible pass inside. Hit the backboard. Longley with the wrong number. Gets his fourth, so Malone with a chance for an eight-point lead here if he makes a couple free throws. Look inside, is Longley keeping body contact? He's supposed to. And I didn't see a foul there. I don't know if you did. I did not either. Well, we talked about it last broadcast, Mike. There are just certain guys in the league that will get fouls called upon them, and Luke Longley is one of them. If it's a questionable situation, more often than not, it'll go against Longley. But Malone misses on the free throw. That is his first miss from the line. He's now four of five. 30 points, six rebounds for the mailman. But that fourth quarter still has a question mark on it. The Jazz have their largest lead, 59 to 52. Harper setting up the offense. Pippen with the shot clock now at 10. Keith Jordan on the bench. No one really looking to be aggressive for Chicago. Kukoc, four to shoot. Kukoc, he hits the three. All right, I'll tell you what, if Chicago wins this game, that possession right there might be the thing that turns it all around. Tony Kukoc, 22 points. Final seconds of the quarter. Isley gave it away for Pippen. Final second, Pippen from half court. And he comes up just short. We will head to the fourth. The Utah Jazz trying to avoid elimination. They lead the two-time defending champion Bulls, 59 to 55. 12 minutes of basketball left. We'll come back to the United Center after these words on Channel 4. You look at that quarter and you think Utah needed to do what they went and did, mm -hmm. which was to get themselves in front, mm -hmm. but is it quite enough? Well, you know, Jordan was on the bench for, for a good part of it. Now he's going to come back. Uh, whether they can sustain it with the full side out there is important. So 
Um, you know, we'll have to see how they do in, in the end, but certainly got that momentum back. Have that sort of uh, confident look in their eyes. I think you, you noted uh, in the first half, you, you dubious, dubious look in their eyes. Yes, you know, exactly. Like, yeah, the body defeat. language all wrong. Yeah, but I think it's come back, and I think they look more like Utah Jazz that we're used to seeing. I tell you what, you, you look at this game now, it's low scoring, but uh, and often you say that's a bad game, but not in this particular case. And one man who has taken, the, taken it on by the full brunt and, and gone and done it, 31 points, no other Jazz in, in double figures, right. is Karl Malone. Yeah, he's carrying them, and you know, as I said, uh, he can't do that uh, for the entire series in order for him to win, but certainly today, realizing that uh, if he can do that for one game and take it back to Utah, anything could happen, so, you know, all credit. So he's taking a lot of stick this series back in the States, and, you know, credit to him, when he, you have to give him credit when he does do it. And, of course, Utah are a team that likes to talk about the team ethic, but yeah. uh, every now and then, perhaps it does require one man to come out, because that's how the Bulls often do it. Yeah, uh, you know, um, but uh, I still think that uh, in order for him to win this, you know, the other guys have to stand up and be, be accounted for. You saw a little uh, glimpse of, of, of what uh, uh, the big dog has done in, in a few yeah. series beforehand. You know, he's got the shades. On. Looks like he's out of a, a, a John Shaft movie, you know. <laughs> That's with right, the, yeah. With the shades on, you know. But he, he woke up a little bit. If, if Anderson and a few of the other guys come off the court, come off the bench and give him a lift, well, it'd be great. they've got to do our die quarter on their hands now. And uh, we talk often again about, like, crucial moments in the game. Utah could have stepped quite a lead up, and then Tony Kukoc once again hits a biggie. This big three is very the big quarter. three. Faces up, uh, looks like he's going to pass it. And again, you got a big man on, on, a, on another big man with guard skills, can't guard him. And of course, the classic thing is what's happened is Tony Kukoc has done that while Michael Jordan's away. It's been a bit like that for Tony tonight. Could be his night, could be the Bulls. We'll see now. Scotty Pippen opens the fourth quarter with a three-pointer that was waved off. Foul was called prior to that shot. Gentlemen, so many questions heading into the final 12 minutes of action. Will this be the final quarter of the NBA season? Will this be the final quarter for the Bulls dynasty? And will this be the final quarter for Michael Jordan? I don't know if we'll have all the answers at the end of the 12 minutes. We'll certainly have some of them. That one is good, a three-pointer, Steve Kerr. Well, that's a set play, a double screen, and Kerr open, and didn't take him long to get it up there. And it's a one-point game. Stockton looking to the inside. Anderson battling with Jordan. And Jordan may have came over the back. I think that's four fouls on Jordan, too, line off the ball inside. So Jordan trying to be physical with Anderson gets his fourth. We'll see if they'll continue to go in Jordan's direction. Anderson and Jordan battling again. Jordan continues to fight. It's the only way he knows how to play, Iron is tough. Russell leaning three, and the Jazz answer right back with a three-pointer. He's been quiet too, Russell, as Malone watches. 62 to 58, Utah. Just over a minute gone by, we're in the fourth. That is Utah's first three-pointer of the night. Jazz lead by four. Jordan on a kick out. Kerr. It rims out. Longley couldn't grab it. Carr, the loose ball foul. And that's the reason why he didn't grab it. Antoine Carr had a hold of him. Kerr tried again to answer that three pointer, but couldn't get that one to go. And enough rest for Carl Malone. Jerry Sloan, knowing how important these minutes are, sends the mailman back on the floor to replace Antoine Carr. And a quick, small team out there for Jerry Sloan. Steve Kerr dumps it inside to Pippen. He's watched by Morris. Jordan to Pippen. Pippen on a turnaround jumper. And it's rebounded by the Jazz. And everything for Pippen is off from the basket. He's not being strong with the basketball at all. He has been abysmal from the field. Two of 14. Malone the turnaround. Book it. Boy, give Utah a lot of credit. Chicago got it to one, and now they answer right back and have the 64-58 lead. And give credit to Carl Malone, who was sitting on the bench, inserted, comes right in, pays dividends, 33 points. Scotty Pippen, a three. He can't buy one. Right place, right time, Luke Longley. Yes, yeah, Scott Burrell kept it alive, Iron, and Pippen continues to miss, but that time gets bailed out. 64 to 60, Jazz. Stockton guarded by Kerr. 
Stockton on a clear out. He gets it off for Anderson. Anderson, hard drive to the rim. Spins it through for two. Boy, used his dribble well. He's strong with the basketball. The lane open because Malone took a lot of traffic with him down low. Shannon Anderson with six points in just 11 minutes of action. And the Jazz lead once again six. Counting down to nine minutes remaining in the fourth. Jordan had a notion from three. The spin move. Jordan missing on the layup attempt. Knocked to the outside. The Jazz with numbers. No look feed. Stopped it. Russell gets it to drop. Brian Russell missed the dunk, but it rimmed through. Your plays like that make me think this could be Utah's night. Timeout, Phil Jackson. Bulls take a full timeout with 8.53 to play in the fourth. The Utah Jazz showing signs of life. They lead the Bulls 68 to 60. Fourth quarter action will continue. We have live coverage for you right here on Channel 4. The Jazz want this series to continue, and they're playing like it. Back in a moment. Versus Utah, and do the Bulls fans now keep those candles aside for the moment? Are they going to have to wait for the celebration? Because they are now eight points behind. And, uh, Jim, it's intriguing the way this is now going. I mean, the, people always talk about it's your night when, and uh, it's a classic example. I mean, Brian Russell up there for a big jam, which, which should have gone straight home. He did it the hard way. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at this attack to the basket, great fast break. He goes up, gets a little touch on the head, misses the, the dunk, and then it still comes back in. I mean, it would have been a horrible miss that he missed it, but, you know, the luck is with him, and, uh, and it went down. When things like that start happening, um, you know, like Mike said down the court side, it, you start thinking, well, is it your night because it's just falling away? That's right, because we've seen the Utah on the ascendancy in the second half. And eight points isn't always a big gap, mm -hmm. is it? But psychologically again this looks I think it's probably the biggest lead we've seen all night for both sides yeah but I think uh, you know Phil Jackson coach Phil Jackson made a good decision calling a timeout right then and there refocusing his guys eight points isn't insurmountable uh, certainly with Chicago at home uh, and I think uh, now you know Utah's gonna have to show that toughness to keep it there and then of course uh, they're gonna have to contain uh, you know uh, Michael Jordan and, and, and company that's right it's around uh, nine minutes still to go here and uh, as I say eight points gap there so, uh, Ian and Mike, when we, uh, when we chat and, and we're sitting here talking about this particular game, Carl Malone, he's, he's shown himself to be a man who's prepared to take this game on. As you look around that court, is, are the other guys ready for this, do you think, the Utah players? I think they finally are. I'm not sure that I would have said that, Webbo, last quarter or earlier in this game, but they are feeding now off of Carl Malone. And for the first time in a long time, you're actually sensing some confidence in this Jazz team. And you can see it from their bench, too, Ian. As they do well, their bench is getting into it also from the bench. And uh, Chicago needs to score here to keep this thing within range. Jordan on a spin move. Short jumper is off the mark. Rebounded by Malone. It's an eight-point Jazz lead. Just over eight and a half left in the fourth. Jazz outscored the Bulls 29 to 19 in the third quarter. Malone in and out. Pippen snatches the rebound, and here come the Bulls. Kerr sets it up, lines it up. Three-pointer, Steve Kerr. Well, and that's why he's in the game, is to hit open shots like that, and all of a sudden it could have been 10, now it's five. 68 to 63. And the Jazz turn it over. How quickly things can change, especially when you're playing in a difficult climate like this one at the United Center. These fans have been charged up. And, and see if Kerr or someone else hits a shot here, this place will go nuts even more, Ian. And there's an off-the-ball foul again. Chris Morris. And there's the open play. Pippen knows Kerr's there. He's open. It's like money in the bank. Long three-pointer goes down. That is textbook form from Steve Kerr. 13 foul on Utah. Longley holds the ball. He's watched by Malone. Jordan strokes the jumper on target. For well, what class and competitiveness the Chicago team has. 22 for Jordan. Jazz in front by three. Malone squares on Longley. 
Malone facing up. The jump shot is good. He's answering all the critics right now. And this is fourth quarter time, and he's playing great. 70 to 65. Malone with 35. Jordan on a crossover. Longley hesitated a moment, but knocks down the jump shot. Man, what about Luke? I mean, he hasn't done anything so far tonight. Hits a tough shot. 6.7 rebounds for Longley. And the Jazz lead. 70 to 67. Stockton looking to the interior. Malone. Go back in on Longley. Anderson the cutter. Ball is free. Russell picks it up. Long jumper. And Malone with the rebound. A new shot clock. Russell will reset it to Stockton. See the bounce is going with Utah now. In games three, four, and five, uh, two, three, and four, those things went to the Bulls. Stockton off the double. Russell gave up the three-point attempt into the hands of Morris. Back to Russell, shot clock at two, and a foul call. No foul. Joey Crawford, Bennett Salvatore said no foul was committed. Back on the other end, though, there is a foul on Utah as Jordan made the move. And a full timeout. Looked like there was some heavy contact but the whistle did not blow. He's pipping open, but no pass. Jordan gets it on the second option. Nails the jumper from long range. I goes back the other way. That makes it a three-point game. Here's Jordan again with the drive. Finds Luke Lowley as Malone helps out. Malone a little tardy getting there. We will step aside with 6.04 remaining in the fourth. The Jazz on a three-point advantage. Interesting. 67-70. There's just three points in it now. And uh, the Utah had their moment, and now the Bulls look like they might be sneaking it back. And, uh, Jim, when you see big threes like this one from Steve Kerr, you start suspecting, OK, what we said before, let's ignore it. Yeah, big-time shot. On the break, uh, wide open, knocks it down. You know, it, that's the sort of thing we talked about, other guys stepping up, and that's what Steve does so very, very well, uh, support the other guys without shot shooting, and that was a big one. And it was only a minute or so ago that we were looking at Utah still keeping their nose in front with the ball going from end to end. But the turnovers started to happen there, didn't they, Jim? Yeah, I mean, we were looking at maybe them going up by double figures for the first time in the game. But, uh, you know, a couple of tough shots and then a couple of missed executions. And uh, if you can uh, lip read what uh, the coach was saying, you realize he was uh, a little upset with everything as well. Now, Jim, you got a question to ask uh, Iron and Mike down there on the floor? Yeah, I mean, uh, down on the floor, uh, Iron and Mike, do, do you feel, do you sense that on the court? I mean, you're there, which we can't uh, assess the actual atmosphere. Do you think that, uh, you know, the, the Chicago crowd is thinking that the tide is, uh, has turned? I think so, Coach. Certainly at the courage, that shot, the roof almost came off. But they want to continue to play well and keep the crowd involved, because, as you know, it helps. Jordan will back in on Anderson. Jordan across the lane. And it's going the other way. Knocked out of bounds. Jordan wanted a call. I'll say one thing, though, Mike. These fans may have celebrated a bit too early. All the buildup the last day and a half, talking about how the Bulls have already won this series. Obviously, it's not over yet. Drive by Stockton. Inside feed, Antoine Carr from point blank range. And big turnaround there. You had Jordan with the ball, no call, and then Utah comes back and gets a layup to push it back to five. 72 to 67. The Jazz are playing with 14 fouls. The next one will put them over the limit and will send Chicago to the free throw line. Jordan off the double. Pippen, pump fake. Jordan backing in, spinning in. And drawing the foul, he'll shoot a pair. And a sarcastic applause by the crowd here as finally Jordan gets fouled. Here's the play before when they didn't call a foul. And really, I, I, I see what the refs are seeing there. Now here's the layup from Stockton. Makes a beautiful pass to Antoine Carr, goes strong, gets that one. And on the other play, Jordan gets to the free throw line. Jordan is four of five at the line, now make it five of six. 23 points for Michael Jordan. And Dennis Rodman comes into the game along with Ron Harper. Kerr and Longley to the bench. You know, I go back that the Jazz had 10 days off before this series. Maybe they're finally getting the rust off themselves. And if they can continue this series by winning tonight, 
Maybe that fatigue factor that Chicago that everyone talked about might come through. Good point. It's a three-point Utah lead. Under five minutes left in the fourth. Malone. Antoine Carr knocks down the jumper. Well, someone else had to step up for Utah, other than Malone, maybe Stockton. And Antoine Carr has answered the bell in the center position. That has been a void for Utah so far in the series. And Utah extends its lead to five. Pippen with an offensive foul line, pushing off on Ornisek. The official Billy Oaks making the call, and for Scotty Pippen, that's number three. Time is starting to dwindle around. There's Antoine Carr, wide open. Keeps the follow through there. As the coaches tell you that's how to shoot. Seventy-four, sixty-nine, Jazz. Malone. Rodman trying to hold his ground. Malone on a kick out. Stopped him with a shot clock at four. Stopped in the penetration. Foul called before the shot. So the basket will not count. And that will be number four on Pippen. See, Malone got a double team, found John Stockton, and he understood the clock. He, there was contact there, and fortunately for the Bulls, they didn't allow the shot. Four on Scotty Pippen. Stockton. This is Malone. Malone will make his move. Malone into the lane. Gorgeous scoop shot for the mailman. Wow, he went underneath Dennis Rodman, who thought the shot would come up from above the head. And now a seven-point lead for Utah. Malone has 37. And now it's the Bulls with an unforced error. Bulls starting to, uh, I should say, yeah, the Bulls starting to show some panic. I see the Jordan or nobody. Tony Kukoc has gone invisible, too, after that strong start. 76 to 69. 327 to play in the fourth. Stockton. On a crossover. No look feed. Anderson had it blocked. And the Bulls have it. Jordan penetration. And a foul. Before the shot, Jordan understands now he has to take things to the rim, at least to draw a crowd. Here's the play by Malone. Watch how he scoops this up underneath Dennis Rodman. Beautiful play by the mailman, Carl Malone. Clock is stopped with 3.07 left. Jordan hits on the first attempt. He has 25, and he'll get another. Just five points here in the fourth. Jordan. Two out of two. And the Utah lead is five. Stockton guarded by Harper. Stockton feeds the post Malone. Losing the ball and Rodman touched it last. A timeout with 2.49 to play. We are in the fourth quarter of Game 5 of the 1998 NBA Finals. The Jazz lead by five. Back to the studio. Thanks so much indeed, Ian and Mike and uh, Jim. We're looking at this game now, and there's not a lot of minutes left on the clock, but uh, as well you know as a coach in these situations, uh, this, this could go on for time this time, couldn't it? This just could run now. There's not a lot in it. There's plenty of time. It's going to be exciting. I yeah. mean, uh, you know... Chicago's got their work, uh, you know, uh, there to do. Uh, Utah's out in front. They're playing well. Uh, it's going to come down to the wire. I think the next two possessions are going to be very important uh, for Utah to make sure they get a bucket uh, or two just to, just to stay there so that Chicago doesn't make a run at the end. But, uh, you know, it, it's really tough. And Carl Malone stepping up. I mean, we were saying earlier that uh, between uh, Longley and, and Carl Malone, if, if it was a boxing match, that uh, after the fight, Longley would have to wear sunglasses for two weeks because the eyes, you know. It's It'd cover uh, the swelling up, yeah, wouldn't exactly. he? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely <laughs> true. And uh, another one of your favorite guys is, uh, as, you know, you've been worrying in, in, in the last game in particular about uh, Jerry Sloan getting the, you know, the right combination out there. 
and uh, one of your favourite players, the big, big dog. dog, the big he's dog, come in the last few minutes, and he's <laughs> and he's made his he's made his mark, yeah, isn't and, he? And, 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 and you know, we talk about Kukoc so much, and this is one of the reasons why he's so important too, because it's difficult to who are you going to have to guard him because it's so difficult to match up to. And I think you know, Sloan made a decision to keep uh, the big dog out so that they get a better matchup with Kukoc. You know, in this situation, put him in there, and even if Tony scores, at least you got. You know, uh, a veteran who, who's been, you know, all around the world and, and experience is unbelievable exactly. in there. And cool as you yeah. like, he pops that one in there. Exactly. And, uh, but now you look to the balls and you think, is there anyone else apart from Michael? If you look at the, uh, the form as they stand at the moment, because mm -hmm. Kukoc has gone quiet, as Ina Mike said. Scott is not necessarily around the game like he should be. It's got to be Michael. Yeah, and, and you know, Kerr came in and hit a shot or two. I'm, I'm disappointed with the way Ron Harper's uh, performed. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's playing as though he's just, a, you know, the same role as Burrell, which he has too much experience and, you know, an, an ex-All-Star player. He's got to give you something, even if it's not something dynamic physically, something intelligent neck up-wise uh, to make a difference at this point. Yes, indeed. And, and I know, Mike, I mean, it just gets even more intriguing in this series, doesn't it? Because it's not simply a matter of the Bulls not winning the title on their own court. They've got two games back in Utah now. If they lose this one, they could simply lose the entire thing. You're absolutely right, Weber. The momentum can certainly shift. And the Utah Jazz are a confident team on their home floor. Hornacek off the mark on a two-point attempt. Fight for the loose ball. And the Bulls have it. And five seconds on the shot clock. And the Bulls hold down. A five-point Utah lead. Two and a half remaining in the fourth. Jordan, stutter step, pull up. No good. Knocked to the outside. Jordan at a pump fake. Jordan leaning in. He can't get it to drop. Pippen missing on the follow. And nothing is working for Chicago. Rebounded by the big dog. It's one card, a foul. Only the 13th foul by Chicago, so a side out. But certainly some big misses there by Jordan. There the second time, wants to take it to the rim. Watch him try to draw contact, really nothing there. And Pippen misses the tip, and there's Antoine Carr showing his services. The foul on Rodman. Jazz with time now, winding down. Just over two minutes left. They can add to their lead. Hornacek, losing the dribble. Carr, the jumper, got it! Antoine Carr hits a huge jump shot for the Jazz. And now it's up to Chicago to answer. It's down, they're down seven. 78 to 71. Kuko to three. Yes. Wow, and that is unbelievable. That alone that he has the guts to take that type of shot. Tony Kukoc is 10 of 11 from the field. 25 points. And the Jazz lead is now four. These fans really getting geared up. That's one car. Puts it on the floor. The dish off. Anderson baseline jump. Rodman, the defensive rebound. And here come the Bulls, trailing by four. A minute 19 to play. Jordan. Backing in on Anderson. There's the double. Oh. Hesitation shot nearly went down and a foul. Wow, I, I got into it on that type of shot by Michael Jordan. There's Hornacek taking the drive. Watch him almost travel with the ball right there, but he gets it out to Antoine Carr, who's hit big shots here for the Utah Jazz. Carr with 10 points off the bench. Michael Jordan at the free throw line. His team trailing by four. Hits the first. Here's Tony Kukoc. Malone stays back and a lot of time on the shot clock, and he gets a quick three from way outside. Jordan, one more at the line. He knocks them both down. The Jazz in front by just two. Just over a minute left. These fans are on their feet. Stockton gives up the dribble. They'll go to the mailman. Malone on a kick out. Hornacek, the bounce for Malone, the jumper. He buries it. Carl Malone. Timeout, Chicago. 53.3 seconds left. And the Utah Jazz with a four-point lead. There it is, I The tough shot, Robin, right there. The Bulls in good position to rebound. Malone gives his team a four-point lead. He certainly has delivered. That's worth another look. T just spreads his elbow a little bit to get room. 
and nails the jumper. Look at Jerry Sloan pushing him to the defensive end. <laughs> Get back, he says. 39 points for Carl Malone. Will Jordan have an answer? We'll find out momentarily. Webber and Coach coming right down to the nitty gritty. Yeah, not half. I mean, uh, we've seen games here that, that are all close. You know, that we've had one blowout. We've had an overtime. If it, even if it goes to 4-1... Every single game has been a nail-biter. Yeah, I think this one I'm enjoying a little bit more because down the stretch, both teams are playing pretty well. I mean, it, you know, they're, they're going for the aggressions. There's no hesitation. Last game was really ugly. But, uh, you know, Carl Malone is known as the mailman back in the States. And the reason why he's called the mailman is because he delivers, and he certainly yeah. delivered that last shot. Well, I'll tell you what, he's got a good mate alongside him as well. Normally the dogs and the mailmen don't the get along, mate. <laughs> but I'm telling <laughs> you, you are <laughs> here, the leader of his appreciation society. <laughs> and once again... Big dog. That's up. right. Hey, he kicks it out. Hornacek gets that. And he hits a big shot. Good shooter. Big strong man. You know, when we get back to Utah, though, they're going to have all, they're going to be barking and having all the dog's bones out. But you want cool? Tony Kukoc returns to the game suddenly. Kukoc will, you know, he and the, the outside shooters that uh, Chicago has can always shorten the, the, the gap quickly so you, they're never out of it because we, we thought nearly maybe it was, it was all over, but it's not. Uh, well, indeed not. It's 53.3 left. It's one of those mini eternities that we've got in this game. One turnover, and the game turns round once again. Back to Ina Mike. You'd have to go back to game one. When Utah did come up big in the overtime, John Stockton took over. But that's really the only time that the Jazz have handled the pressure. Other than game one, it's been all Chicago. 80 to 76, Utah in front. But now the tables are turned. How will the Bulls handle being behind in the final two minutes? Well, under the you know the final minute now, I have 53 seconds to go, and and you see Game Six that's ne necessary coming up on June 14th. But uh, I think what you have to go to now is either you go to a Jordan drive or you spot up Tony Kukoc for the jumper because. Really, over the course of this ball game, they're the only two players that have really shown any life offensively for Chicago. Michael Jordan. Carl Malone has had so much to think about this series. All the criticism here in the United States regarding his play. He's answered that with 39 points and eight rebounds. But again, unless his team wins, you'll forget about this performance. Playoff highs in his career. He's getting close. Back in 92, he scored 44 against the Clippers. You could put an asterisk on this one, though, and this is against Chicago, which means it's a little bit more. Bulls have possession. They're down by four. 53 seconds left. Jordan off for Kukoc, a three-pointer. He can't hit that one. And the Utah Jazz have the rebound. Hornacek will handle the basketball. Hornacek gets it across. Swarming defense. No foul has been called. Malone flips it over to Carr. Shot clock is down to eight. 30 seconds left. Malone can't hit the jump shot. And Jordan grabs the board with his team down by four. 25 seconds to play. Bulls need some points in a hurry. Jordan outside. Two go to three. And he got fouled, fouled. On. He got fouled. Three free throws for Tony Kukoc. Oh, my goodness. Tony Kukoc will go to the free throw line to shoot three. That is not a smart play by Carl Malone. Malone rushed out and got him right on the arm. That's why the shot was so short. And, folks, if you shoot a three-pointer and it doesn't go in, you get three free throws no matter what the situation. Kukoc hits the first. This is big, Ionet. If the Bulls could come out with three points here, would make it a one-point game because there's 18.9 seconds left. Chicago initially will go for a steal. If they don't get it, they'll foul, and it's still a one-possession ball game. Two coach hits on the second attack. And this plays into the hands of what Mike was talking about. If he can hit this last free throw, the worst Chicago could be down is three points with a chance to tie and send it to overtime possibly. They might even have a chance to grab the victory. Kukoc, third attempt. Short. 
rebounded by Russell, and a quick foul with 17.4 left. Now, if Russell hits two free throws, makes it a two-possession game. So that was a critical miss. Chicago still not over the limit, so they'll foul quickly here. But they get the ball into Hornacek. Fischoffer stopped it. Time is running out. Antoine Carr will hold on to it. And finally, the Bulls foul with 10.4 remaining. Antoine Carr is going to the free throw line for the first time tonight. And the Bulls lost eight seconds or so there, Ian. They got flat-footed. The officials gave a quick one, and then they, the, the, the Utah Jazz got the ball in. He's a big, big free throw here for Utah. All the pressure on Big Dog. He hits the first. It's a three-point lead, and this will be a crucial toss for the Utah Jazz. Someone has to come out here. Longley came in. Kukoc goes out. The Bulls still have two full timeouts remaining. 120. Carr. Pivotal free throw. He's got it. Antoine Carr. He has been the hero for the Utah Jazz tonight. He gives his club a four-point lead with 10.4 left. All right, I think that the Utah players, coaches, we're sick of hearing about parades and street closings. And as we look at Kukoc dejected after that free throw, they have come out here and obviously played their best game of the series to take a four-point lead. And it looks pretty good for Utah right now. The Bulls will have to get points in a hurry and then a quick foul to even have a chance down the stretch. And these fans cannot believe what they've seen. Another sellout here at the United Center, and they counted these Jazz players out. These fans and the media here in Chicago talking about the parade scheduled for Monday if the Bulls won tonight. And it seemed like a foregone conclusion that this series was over, but there's a reason why they play these games. There certainly is, because you keep score. And right now, there's four more points the Jazz have than the Chicago Bulls. And you know what, I now that I look back at this and if Utah wins, which it looks like they might, there's still time, Antoine Carr, someone else needed to do something, whether it was to rebound, be aggressive, play strong. Well, Antoine Carr did that, and then he caps it off with two big free throws to make it a four-point game. He really has played no role in this series whatsoever until tonight. 21 minutes, 12 points, four rebounds, and two of the biggest free throws in franchise history. And, and, and not to take anything away from Carl Malone, too. Carl Malone has done it, but you expect him to do it. You only say it when he doesn't get it done. So Carl Malone, with his 39 big points, certainly has been a major contributor. And as you know, game six will be coming up two nights from now if the Jazz can hold on for the W. Jordan. He can forget about whatever retirement plans might have been swirling around his head. He's got 10.4 more seconds left to pull off a miraculous victory and give his team their sixth championship in the last eight years. Two coach will trigger in. They need points quickly. Pippen taking his time. Kukoc, long three. Yes! Tony Kukoc has done it again! It's a one-point game! with five and a half seconds left. Chicago will foul as soon as the ball comes in if they don't get the steal. Kerr trying to foul. They get it ahead to Hornacek. Time is winding down, and Hornacek is fouled with just over a second left. What a play by the Utah Jazz to keep the ball away from the Bulls. And that's what it was, I. It was a set play. Stockton delayed, then got open. He saw Hornacek streaking to the goal because the Chicago players defensively were overplaying trying to get the steal or the foul Pippen's out six points what a poor effort two of 16 shooting did have 11 rebounds and 11 assists I'll tell you what I the Bulls were fortunate they did get a foul there that was a not a real hard foul it was more of a touch variety that's a benefit of the doubt call that Chicago gets to try to you know what 1.1 seconds there will be a timeout, make or miss, by the uh, Jeff Warnacek here of Utah. 
and Chicago will have one last guest. Hornacek with two free throws. His team up by one. Hornacek missing the toss from the line. He is now four of seven from the strike. Tell you what, if he misses like that again, it'll be tough for the Bulls to get possession because someone will touch that, and if you don't have possession, you cannot call a timeout. But you have to put points on the board if you're Utah. Hornacek hits the second attack, and there's a timeout call by Chicago. The window still open, just a crack for the two-time defending champion Bulls and their leader, Michael Jordan. It's 83 to 81, Jazz. Oh, it's never easy, is it? And Jerry Sloan and, and his cool coach again with a big shot. Pippen didn't want it. He did not want to take a shot there. He found cool coach who was even further out and somehow he bails him out with the long three. Then they get the foul and Mornicek obliges by missing one. So all Chicago needs is a deuce now to put it into overtime and look for that man on Kukoc to step up and take the shot. See, look what Pippen is. Kukoc is a foot or two out further, and he hits that shot. Unbelievable. But he hits it with just over five seconds left, and they lose about four seconds just trying to foul the Utah Jazz. You know what, though, even 1.1 seconds, as my college coach Dean Smith would say, and he coached Jordan, too. It's an eternity. Jordan will be able to get the ball, and you'll be able to put one dribble down and get the shot up to try to free yourself from the defense. He's done this. Look at him. He Was he going to a picnic, or is he going to go ahead and try to tie this game up? And watch the Phil Jackson might go for a three to try to end it right here and forget about Utah if the shot goes in. Scotty Pippen fouling out, so he will not be on the floor for the final 1.1 seconds. It's been done before. 1.1, you look at it on the clock and say, well, hey, that's tough. Hey, you know, what team is going to be able to come up in this kind of pressure situation with a basket? If there is a team that can do it, it's the Chicago Bulls. But I don't think Phil Jackson will defer from Michael Jordan. He's earned it. Although Ku coach has hit these shots, it's Jordan's game to win or lose, in my opinion here, Ian, unless he becomes a big camouflage. What they like to do here is line people up across the foul line. Everyone takes off in a direction, and there'll be one guy standing to get the ball. The only thing you can hope for here if you're Chicago, at least get off a clean shot. Feel as if you went down fighting. Right, absolutely. They have, though, and somehow they've made this a, a, a possession game to tie. Here we lined go. up at the free throw line. Everybody will join, get out of there except for Jordan, I think. Utah. Here we go with 1.1 second left. 83-81 Jazz. A delay of game. So Ron Harper will trigger in. 20 second timeout, Phil Jackson. He's going to change the play, Ian. He's going to change the play. You get only one delay of game. You get called for it a second time. It results in a technical and a free throw for the other team. So Utah used that. Chicago will now counter, either change the play or use it as a decoy to maybe throw off a Utah Jazz defense. Jerry Sloan, final instructions. You've worked so hard to get to a moment like this. So many practices. So many shoot-arounds, a long NBA regular season, a long postseason. And it comes down to a moment like this with 1.1 left on the clock. Utah just fighting for their lives. And one thing they should do is bring Ostertag in to go against the basketball. He's a tall guy. He's seven foot plus. They should use him to just go after the basketball. But during the 22nd timeout, if uh, Chicago didn't make a substitution, you can't bring him in. So what does Jerry Sloan do? He calls timeout to get Ostertag in the game. I think it's smart coaching by Sloan. So a timeout call by the Jazz. 83 to 81. The uh, Utah Jazz with the lead and talking this one over with just 1.1 on the clock. Yeah, what a way to 
in this game. I mean, this roof would be blown off if somehow Chicago hits a three-pointer to win it. And plus, <laughs> if that man or anyone else hits a two to tie it, I think Chicago will feel like they won the game, but there'll still be more to play if they can get a tie. Everybody was talking about this being the final dance for the Bulls. They didn't tell the Utah Jazz that, though. They didn't oblige. They weren't good partners because they want to get this thing back to Utah. And then, Ian, home court back on the shoulders of the Utah Jazz. The whole series can change in one fall swoop. So Greg Ostertag has been inserted. He will guard the inbounds passer, Ron Harper. This is it. 1.1 left on the clock. 83-81 Jazz. Harper gets it in. Knocked away. Out of bounds. With three tenths of a second left. Let's see if they put more time on the I, clock. I think a few more seconds might go. 0 0.4, 0 0.5 abrupt. Which means you can catch the ball now and shoot. As opposed to 0.3, you'd have to tip it in. Point 0.8, all right. So eight tenths of a second left. Harper will look to get it in cleanly. Jazz lead by two. Fighting to stay alive. They get it in. Jordan to three. No good. This series is headed back to Utah. So Jazz remain alive with a resilient performance at the United Center. Utah avoids elimination. The final. Jazz 83. Bulls 81. That'll do it from here. More to come. The final's live, and it's turned into an absolute classic series because the Utah Jazz have Nick one in Chicago, just like Chicago, Nick one in Utah. And uh, Jim, you are the president of his uh, fan club, Antoine Carr. <laughs> he's come into this game now. He hasn't had a lot of minutes in the series, and he's done everything that Jerry Sloan could have hoped from him. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm just, just surprised he didn't get uh, a chance to play, you know, a little earlier, uh, showing some footage there. But, uh, you know, I think that maybe uh, he would have been a difference uh, in, in the early games. But, you know, he came in, he's a veteran, he's played all over the world, and, uh, you know, he showed his pedigree tonight. Knows what he's doing. Yep. Uh, Tony Kukoc got very, went very quiet after a very good start. Hit an unbelievable three to keep the balls interested all the way down the end. Yeah, I mean, like, like they said on the floor, I mean, uh, two, three feet beyond the, the NBA arc. Uh, and that was a tremendously long shot. Uh, for those at home, uh, their, their, their three-pointer is, is, is maybe, uh, you, now, you know, two, three you feet longer than ours here in, in, in the UK anyhow. But, uh, you know, I think uh, that shot was just tremendous. Now, the, where it gets weird from this point forward is if we started this game talking about the, the, the uh, Chicago Bulls winning a, a sixth title... It's gone back to the way it's meant to be, that the number one seeds have now got two games at their place to win the series. Yeah, I, I think if you look at it, uh, the overall picture, uh, it's still probably how Chicago wanted to happen anyway. They knew that they had only three games at home out of the seven. They wanted to try to win one of them uh, away early, which they did uh, at Utah. Came back 1-1 to Chicago. They won two of them in Chicago. You know, okay, maybe they, they, they lose one at Chicago. We always thought that. Uh, it's difficult to sweep three in a row. So they've gotten exactly what they want. they got two games to win one. Ooh, what else could yes. you ask for? It's cracking stuff. Both teams, thanks very much indeed for coming again. We'll, okay. we'll see you later on because uh, it, it's both teams have now broken serve. We now have to go back to Utah. That will be on Sunday night. 83-81 Utah win it here in Chicago. We are back with you live for Game 6 in Salt Lake City, Sunday around midnight. We'll see you then.